First it was black, now it's Albert. Let's get into it. Welcome to Tam Telling Tales. I am Tam, and today we are reviewing Elbert, The Uncaged Mind, which is book two in the Black series. Now we met Elbert in book one, and he's Black's brother. Okay, like his brother like he might not be blood related brother but you know how we do we be like oh that's my brother that's my sister that's my cousin but not really but they are thick as thieves okay and much like black he has a very captivating physical prowess and a very stern demeanor but he kind of scary like all through the book they talk about this man's lifeless eyes so much so that the woman who tickles his fancy miss anna she don't want nothing to do with him initially. Oh, but baby, how she changed her tune when he didn't have to step in and defend her against these folks that was trying to kidnap her and put her in slavery, which they actually did, right along with Elbert. We spend the rest of the book discovering how Elbert not only escapes the physical bondage of being sold into slavery, we also get to observe the uncaging of his mind as he rediscovers his pride, his self-respect, and his mental strength. Like I always do with this time, I want to tell you who I am pictured, and pictured, envisioned, who I envisioned as Elbert. Yeah, yeah. I can see him being Elbert. Now y'all know. If slavery is an issue for you, if it makes you uncomfortable, that's too bad. You still need to read this book and some history books. I've told y'all that before. And you know what? Another thing that we see in this book that, in my opinion, still haunts black men to this day is the fear of losing your freedom and having your pride stripped simply for being black. The author continues to develop this brotherhood that we saw from book one and it develops throughout book two. So like, I feel like every time they were setting out for one of their missions, I could just hear, ain't nobody and with my click, 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 click. Like I could just see this song playing as they was just bouncing up on their horses and stuff. <sighs> so exciting. And this relationship with Elbert and Anna like, this author has a really great way of having the most unconventional and uncanny methods of piecing these people together. But initially, it starts off out of fear. And then appreciation. And then necessity, passion. Then ultimately love. And we got some real people pop up. Like, you know she is good for intertwining her fictional stories with these non-fictional people, right? And that's exactly what she did in this book. So we got to see a couple of people that you will recognize. I'm not going to tell you who they are, but just know that it's going to be pretty nice to see them show up in the book. This book gets five acrylic nails from me. So we've come to the part of the video where my people who have not read the book might want to start tipping on out because I'm about to start spoiling. Before you do though, make sure you hit the thumbs up for this video. Unless you didn't like it, then you can hit the thumbs down, but don't do that. Don't hit the thumbs down. Hit the thumbs up for me, okay? Subscribe and hit the notification bell. I don't want you to leave. But you gotta go right now. Cause the book I'm about to spoil it. <laughs> Y'all like my song? Probably not, but whatever. <laughs> so my favorite supporting character was Miss Cora. Like, I was a little concerned at first that she was not gonna be all that receptive to Everything that had happened with Anna and Elber and them showing back up and everything. I thought she was going to be a little overbearing because, you know, sometimes mothers of them only daughters, they can do that sometimes. But she really didn't. They showed back up. They was like, uh, yeah, 
<sighs> we about to leave and go back to Fort Independence. What you about to do? And Miss Cora like, oh, well, shoot. Let me go get my bag. I'm about to come with y'all. And Miss Cora said, right on in for Independence. Heck, she did better than Anna, if you ask me. She got right on up in there with Big Mama, and they was just cooking biscuits and all that good stuff. So I was real proud to see how Miss Cora came along. And especially how she took that doggone situation with her man, Mayhew, uh, Miha, or Mama Duke, whatever his name was, because he was trash snitching scumbag i swear it's always a snitching scumbag in these books but shoot she found out he was dead she was like oh we'll do what you gotta do son <laughs> i love miss cora and my favorite conflict well i don't know if it was my favorite but the conflict that probably really was unsettling to me was when they killed beatrice when they, okay, hold on. Let me say that different. When Beatrice ended up having to die. I'm going to say it like that. And there's a few things that bother me about all of this. First of all, how you just dirty dog shoot her like this. And then she been laying up for all these days, just holding on to life. Scumbags. Just, ugh. That messed with me. But the worst part of it was she's showing up and then she whispering in Elber ear like, um, basically take me out. Like, this man then shot her in the head and killed her. Like, even though she was dying. Like, I don't know how I feel about that. Because on one end, I get it. Like, yeah, you don't want her to just sit here and just keep on being in pain and dying. But on the other end, I just felt like it was like taking an animal out. Like, I just felt like she just got treated so dirty in this book. And it just, it hurt me a little bit. It hurt me a little bit. Even though I know Elbert was doing what he thought was right. Like, ain't none of that sit well with my spirit. None of it. Whew, I need a fan. <laughs> Not my cracker moment. Baby, when Elbert... Then went back to Boston with Anna and Henry then showed up to see about her. Oh, <laughs> Elber was so pissed. Like, he's standing behind her thinking, like, I'm going I'm to kill him. I'm going to just kill him. I'm going to kill him. And I'm thinking the whole time, like, Elber, sir, she was supposed to be with this man before you ever came along. Like, you the one that is being intrusive in their relationship, not the other way around. What is you mad about? Oh my goodness, and Paul Henry. I mean, they just hold the hell out of Paul Henry in front of all them men. Oh, <laughs> that was terrible. Elba was just pissed for no reason. Like, hold my cane, hold my cane, I'm about to shoot him. <laughs> like, sir, would you calm down? And Anna, oh, Paul, sweet Anna. I don't really think she even loved him at this moment, though. But she just knew, like, if I'm going to keep Henry alive, I'm going to just have to go ahead and go with the flow. She like, I ain't going to be able to be with you. Bye. Have a nice life. Like, dang, they hold the hell out of Henry. Elbert is so mean. He is such a bully, y'all. That's why he can't even be my sad piece, okay? Like, y'all can have him. Oh, he get on my nerves. <laughs> but I was cracking up, though, because they played here with you. <gasps> they played him. a beautiful love story with a real ugly backdrop in the midst of all of that ugliness there was still love there was still brotherhood there was still strength and the message to us all is that united we can do anything next week i'll be dropping my review of book three in the series emancipating james so you guys make sure that you be on the lookout for that review Again, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and like this video. Thanks so much. I'm Sam. I'm selling sales. Read a book.